All right, this is a part of my pre-warm-up series. Uh, so pre-warm-up, what this means is any injuries you've had in the past or kind of problems and stiffness and whatever type of injury that you've had, whether you're an athlete or a non-athlete, it doesn't matter. When you show up to lift before you do your normal warm-up, you need to do a pre-warm-up based around those injuries, okay? Today, we're going to focus on the elbow, all right? Elbow slash wrist, but mainly the elbow, okay? I want you to understand three things. For the elbow, to keep this healthy, we need soft tissue work, okay? We need mobility slash flexibility work, as well as strength work. And what I mean by strength work is more the endurance, high rep type stuff, okay? We're going to do a lot of mini strength exercises, and you'll understand what I'm saying here in a minute. A lot of lifters, they'll get this... This tennis, or sorry, this tennis elbow, the um, golfer's elbow, whether it's the, the medial epicondylitis, the lateral epicondylitis, um, a lot of throwers, I work with tons of baseball players, uh, whether they have a mechanical deficiency in the delivery, they'll kind of get some stiffness and some kind of irritation through here. So I'm going to show you some things that I've done in the past when I've gotten that tendonitis in here and tendonitis in both sides, kind of help you out a little bit. So first thing I want to show you, I have four exercises is the palm stretch, okay, the wall uh, palm stretch. You can use a wall, but I'm gonna show you here on a box squat box to kind of help you out. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get onto this box and you're gonna stretch right here and hold this stretch for one minute before you even get started. We're gonna sit right here. You should be feeling this all the way through the forearm, all the way through the flexors, all the way up through, up to that medial, uh, that medial up condyle. And for me, I've had injuries here in the past, so I'm definitely real tight right here. You want to hold this for one minute. This is before you start your regular warm-up, okay? So after I get that, I'm going to reverse. I'm going to do the other side, okay? This part right here is key. I'm going to put the top part of my uh, hand on this, and I'm going to rotate my elbow inside here to where I can really feel that stretch across the top of my forearm here. We're going to hold this for one minute. Sit there. Relax, make sure you're breathing whenever you're stretching, okay? You don't want to be tight. Let that fascia tighten up when you're, when you're doing these exercises, okay? So we get done. That's the first one, okay? Obviously, we do both arms, so you can do both arms at the same time. Rotate in. I'm just demonstrating with my elbow. It's easier for you to see. Now, we're going to do 90-degree sledgehammer rotations, okay? So I'm going to roll over here. I'm going to grab an eight-pound sledgehammer. So I do a lot of physical therapy. Um, with uh, therapists and, and they're only doing their jobs, but a lot of the times they're doing exercises that are easy. It's, it's not working. It's, it's too, it's, it's kind of going through the motions type of exercises. It happened with my lower back when I fractured my lower back. You'll see that in the video in the future and, and kind of exercises that I learned to help me the most. But a lot of times they'll have you rotate a small three pound or two pound dumbbell, a uh, dumbbell, sorry. Um, whether we're going from, you know, pronation and supination back and forth and it didn't really work as much, so I started, this last time I had uh, tendonitis was about three years ago, I got tendonitis on the inside of my elbow, okay, golfer's elbow if you want to call it that, and I kept doing the therapy and nothing was working. They were doing the scraping, they're doing all kind of um, soft tissue work with me, um, that was helping a little bit, but the big thing is I was missing the, the uh, strength exercises, so I learned this exercise, I kind of started throwing with the sledgehammer, obviously you want to progress to, to, uh, to the sledgehammer, it's a progression, you want to start with a regression of the exercise, um, but I'm going to hold this out, not too, not too far, but I'm going to hold, my, hold it out, palm up right here, okay, supination, I'm going to let this, this sledgehammer drop as low as I can, get a nice stretch, when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you're doing this under control. Do not do this fast. Okay, you see how I had my uh, arm on my knee here, on my leg? Make sure I'm nice and under control. And I'm just going to go back and forth here, okay, from supination into pronation. Nice and relaxed. Get a good stretch. Hold it for about a count, one to two seconds at each end, back and forth here, and feel that stretch. Okay, if you need to hold it a little bit further on the edge so you get a little bit more of a stretch, a little bit heavier weight, that's fine as well. We're back and forth here, back and forth, okay? You're just going to do about three sets of 10 repetitions, okay? Obviously, we're going to work both sides and make sure we, we, we do this under control. This is most important. I have kids do it standing as well. When you do it standing, again, we don't want to hold out because we don't want to stress and hurt the elbow. We don't want to get out there until we restrain the actual tendons, strain the actual muscles, and make sure that we're not doing something to hurt ourselves. So when they're doing it standing, we keep a 90 degree angle and we're holding right here. I prefer you, because most people will, will mess this up, to make sure that you have a base for your forearm, whether I'm sitting right here using the box squat box, okay, or I'm sitting right here standing and I'm using my leg right here. 
That's what we want to make sure that we're doing when we're doing this exercise, okay? That'll help loosen it up, work the mobility and the strength right there, okay? And I'll probably do a second elbow, because there's a million exercises that you can do, but I'll do a second elbow pre-warm-up in the future. Third exercise, okay? Wrist extension. So I've got an Iron Mind brand uh, rubber band right here, okay? They have a bunch of different um, tensions. they got a lot thicker bands. We have them in a uh, box and a tote. Kids come in as part of their pre-warm-up. They'll grab this and they'll do this. So we're constantly gripping and flexing, constantly grabbing dumbbells and kettlebells, barbells. All right, so we get a lot of tightness, we get a lot of stiffness in there. So we're going to work on some extensions here and kind of work on the other side, get a burn on both sides, the inside and the outside of that forearm. But we're going to work on some mobility while we're doing this. So I'm going to start here down, work my way up, rotate up, okay? Nice good range of motion. So I'm coming in from my pronation position all the way up into my supination position. So I'm just rotating my arm back and forth, back and forth. Make sure I keep the band up here in the top wrapped around the fingers. Back and forth. Work on extending here. Reach out as far as you can like you're trying to grab a big basketball. Rotate back down. Back and forth, okay? So you do 50 repetitions like that, and then we do the same thing, rotating and pronating down back here with the hand. Boom, 50 reps in a row. So we'll work on extension, and you do a lot of reps. Now you can do 100 reps per exercise, or you can do the 50 reps, but we want to do a lot of high reps with this. A lot of rehab protocol, if you focus on the eccentric part of lifts and you focus on high reps and endurance, those two cues will help you the most when it comes to rehabbing these little injuries, the tricky injuries that take forever to get away. That's what I've noticed a long time. And you'll notice in a lot of my other exercises, especially the back one, the high reps that ended up helping me out the most. So make sure you're rotating, right? And then we're going back and forth both ways. The last exercise is a lacrosse ball smash or a roller smash. So you see those rollers all the time where people are rolling out and they're trying to dig in. I've got a couple of balls right here. I'll show you a lacrosse ball and I'll show you Mr. Spikey here. I'm not actually going to demonstrate with these because I've got a better version that I like using with the barbell instead. But say I've got a table here, you can also use a wall. And I'm going to roll whatever side that's bothering me. So let's just say it might, I'm bothered here on the inside, this medial side of my elbow. I'm going to be rolling back and forth right here, finding those sensitive spots, digging in here real deep, dig, find that range of motion, find a sensitive spot, and then I'm going to work on some, again, you know, rotating my wrist back and forth, finding that sensitive spot, doing some uh, work and some mobility work while I'm finding that trigger point and anything that's bothering me here. I'm going to roll back and forth here, I can do the thing, same thing here with Mr. Spikey, back and forth, dig it in, this will be obviously a lot more uh, intense with the, the, the spikes on the ball, but I'm finding that sensitive spot. It helps out a lot. Now, what I like the most doing, and this is kind of an underrated movement, is the barbell. It's got to get that soft tissue work, okay? Now, the barbell, say I've got it set up here on the J cup. I'm gonna, you can use the smooth side or you can use the actual knurling of the barbell. I'm going to use the knurling of the barbell today. So I'm going to work this side right here, and I'm just going to go back and forth on that sensitive spot. You might get some crunching in there if, 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 if that tissue is real jagged and moving in there. But right here I found that this works very well, kind of loosening things up, and kind of softening things up and smoothing out that fashion, smoothing out that, that, that nasty jaggedness that you got going on in that elbow. And again, I'm feeling some tissue crackling, moving around a little bit right here. A lot of scar tissue has probably built up for me over time from throwing and being a old ball player, old beat up ball player. But I'm going back and forth. Now I might spend one to two minutes right here. Find a sensitive spot, use the other hand to kind of help you roll right here. And the big thing is, is keeping that pressure, keeping that pressure, digging in here back and forth. That's going to help out the most. And once I get done, I get done with all those exercises, I'm going to finish one more time before I go through my warm up. I'm going to sit here on the, on the box, stretch this out for about 15 more seconds, kind of loosen up, ready to go. Then I'm going to start my regular warm up for the workout. So this is an example of a pre-warm-up you can do, kind of that elbow that's bothering you, an example of that medial epicondylitis kind of bothering you a little bit, elbow tendonitis, whatever you want to call it. These are some uh, exercises I've done in the past, I've helped with my athletes do in the past, kind of help loosen things up in there. This is Legs Training. If you liked the video, make sure you subscribe. Check out everything else in the details below. I'll have those exercises written out in the description below. Until next time, see you later.